In this video, we're talking about how to start recording in Reaper. My name is Paul Toby from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me. It's a fun night because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm recording my piano in Reaper and I'm gonna go through all the steps on how to do that. But we can't do it without a little glass of wine and I hope you enjoy this. We're gonna get started right after this. So this video is again how to start recording in Reaper. So I've got this project going that you can see on your screen. It is Reaper and there is a drum track, a bass track, a piano track and then a piano reverb track. And I'm going to talk about how to set up the piano and the piano reverb track in just a minute. But the first two tracks, the drums, uh, that is a recording uh, on YouTube that you can find called How to Make a Drum Track in Reaper. Just search for that and you'll find it. And then the second one is How to Record a MIDI Keyboard in Reaper and we use my MIDI keyboard to create this bass track. So we got bass and drums going, which is good. And then we need a piano track and we're gonna record, record my real piano here, my Evoc Concert Grand. And I have a couple of Rode NT5 microphones, a matched pair they are just below the lid of the piano so the right 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 microphone as the player is listening to it is focused on the right half of the piano and the bass which is the left channel is focused on the lower half and we're running those microphones into a behringer umc 404 euphoria usb audio midi interface and that interface basically grabs the analog signal from the microphones converts it into digital and the two microphones are plugged into channel one and two and there is an output into the computer there is also a headphone output and so i'm monitoring it in monitor mode so the behringer is set into monitor mode and i'll talk about how to set that up in reaper because that's very important uh, and you'll find out why in just a minute so now here we're back in reaper and this track here, and again, if you are just new to Reaper, just hit Control T like this, and it'll create a new track. And you can see the new track in there. We're just going to delete it because we don't need it. Uh, but you can rename the track, which we're going to do. It's already named Piano, but just rename it. And it'll show up there, and it'll also show up in, if you actually click View, and you're... Uh, view mixer or control M or command M for short uh, you can get this mixer in the bottom okay and you can see the tracks are named so if I change it to piano it's piano here and then piano reverb so that's the piano track and what you want to do is you want to grab stereo inputs one and two so where did that come from so it's this little section right here you actually have to choose the mic inputs and because the input is set correctly you can see is as I'm talking the piano microphones are picking up my voice and in order to set those up you need to go to preferences which is control or command P and then you need to use the ASIO driver and then inputs one and two from the Behringer just like that and then the output is three and four because that's sending it back to the Behringer so that we can monitor the sound through our headphones because that's where the headphones are plugged in. So the headphones are not plugged into the computer, they're plugged into the USB interface. A lot of people choose to do that because of you don't want to record reverb, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So those are selected. And then, of course, input stereo one and two. We already talked about that. And then what you need to do is you need to create another track, label it Piano Reverb, and we're going to send from track three, which is Piano, to Piano Reverb, which it already is here. But it says, it says already send to track four. 
and you just choose that by clicking in this down list here. Just add new send and send it to track four. And then you can also control the volume here of how much is being sent to that track. I just have it on default, which is right there. You can see a little line behind it right there. Okay, and that's all we need to do there. And then on the piano reverb track, we need to send that to the monitor output. So we're gonna click off master send. Typically that's checked off, so you wanna uncheck it. And then down here on add new hardware output, you would choose out three and four, which sends it back to the Behringer so we can monitor the, the reverb. And in order to do that, you need to set an FX here and choose whatever reverb you want. In this case, I've chosen Oral River uh, Reverb, and I've used the Piano Hall setting here. And then I'm just gonna lower these a little bit because I don't want too much reverb to monitor. And then completely dry. So all we're doing is sending reverb to the, the, the track four. No, we're just sending the signal and then all we're doing is adding reverb on track four and monitoring the reverb because you get a certain amount of power from the piano itself. So you don't actually need to hear that. You just need to hear the reverb on top of it. Anyway, that's the way I've set it up for myself, which I really like. And now all we need to do, I'm just gonna throw my headphones on and make sure that I can hear reverb, which I do. And then all you need to do is arm the piano track. And I'm also gonna arm the piano reverb. You don't need to do that, but I'm gonna record it as well so I can play it back for you in monitor mode. So I don't have to run to the Behringer and switch it into non-monitor mode because uh, that's the only way you'll be able to hear the piano track unless I do that. So, so I'm gonna record both of these. Then all I need to do is hit record here. Just right click on there and make sure record mode is normal to start. If you wanna do punch in and punch out, you can do uh, time selection or you can do also auto punch by clicking a put pedal or something like that. So all we need to do now is just rewind it to the beginning, which it is. You can see our cursor is up here. All you have to do is just hit that one to send it all the way back to the beginning. You'll hear a click track and we're recording on top of the bed track for Pure Imagination, the song from Willy Wonka. So let's just hit record here and let's start recording. So let's just save that and we're going to roll back to the beginning. And just hit play and let's listen to it a little bit. Now, when you're playing it back and you want to hear it exactly uh, as played, you'll have to go to the reverb on this track and change it from dry to wet, just like that. Okay, but I'm not going to monitor that track, but if, if you want to monitor the actual recording from the piano track, you have to do this in order to hear it properly. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to undo that. And I'm just going to play back uh, the track. As you're playing it back without reverb, you can add this track up. 
see if you want to monitor more reverb. I was a little bit late to come in here. Let's just play it back to here. I mean, it sounds okay, but I'd prefer it to be on the beat. So in our next video, we're going to talk about how to auto punch that. And in the next video, we'll also record a piano solo. And we'll keep recording this song until we get to the end. And I hope you enjoyed being part of that. If you have any questions about any of the setup, any of the gear that I'm using from anywhere from how to place microphones and how to connect them, whatever, put them in the comments below because it'll help me make new videos that people actually want. So that's kind of important to not just make videos for me, but make videos for people to learn things. So. Um, once again, I'm Paul, Paul Toby from jazzmental.com. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. This is a new channel here on YouTube, so it'll really help the traction. And we're posting videos just like this one all the time, pretty much every day. So you can look forward to that. If you haven't yet been to jazzmental.com, go there and subscribe for notifications about upcoming masterclasses and courses. And what I want you to do now is get out there and improvise.